Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the author of What is WebSphere? and the SCJA, Sun Certified Java Associate Certification Guides. So I'd love it if you headed over to scj.com, took a few of my online sample exams, um, clicked on a few Google ads to support my website, um, and uh, maybe even headed over to Amazon and bought a few books off me. Charge them to your boss. Um, if you've got an expense account, buy like 10 or 12. It's always appreciated. Well, one of the things I want to talk about was my number guesser portlet. I've got this neat little number guesser port that allows me to choose a number between, I don't know, 1 and 10, or 1 and 99 is what I've configured right now. And it's got an edit mode where you can come in and, and you can set a number and you can kind of say, hey, I want the limit to be not 1 in 100, but I want the upper limit to be 50. And then when you return, you end up having to pick a number between 1 and 50. Well, um, one of the problems with this edit mode here is I could put uh, any kind of garbage in there and uh, it'll still be valid. So one of the things that the Portlet API provides you is something called a preferences validator. And the preferences validator is just an interface that you can implement, override the validate Portlet preferences method, and uh, simply validate the portlet preference that somebody is trying to update. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to my Java source code of my number guesser project and I'm going to create a new Java class and this is going to be in the com.examscam.portlet package. Type name already exists, I don't mind. And it's going to be called number guesser validator and it's going to implement the interface preferences validator. And there it is, right there. Now, let me see, should it uh, override and have stubs for inherited abstract methods? Uh, absolutely, I think I'm happy with that. And one method will be added in here, and that is the validate method that takes a port of preference. And I'm going to change that just a little bit, and I'm going to name that preference. That all looks good. And uh, I don't know, preferences, why not? Um, now I've actually got some hacked out code here from my book that uh, I just wanted to copy and paste in. And I'll save that. that make sure that all the stuff in my book actually compiles. I hate seeing a book that's got stuff left out and doesn't compile. Um, but essentially what I've done here is I said, you know what, um, my portlet preferences, uh, it's going to have something in there called upper limit. And get that upper limit and parse it. Okay, just see if it parses, and if it does, uh, if it doesn't parse properly, it'll throw a number format exception. So if somebody's typed in some text there, I'll get a number format exception. I catch that exception, then I re-throw that exception as a validator exception. I just provide the name of the field, upper limit, and uh, I'll even pass in the actual exception, number format exception, as one of the arguments so that people can figure out exactly what's going on. But that's about it. That's how you implement uh, a preferences validator. However, simply creating this class doesn't incorporate that into your application. In order for this number guesser validator to be incorporated into the application, you have to make a little bit of a change into your portlet.xml file. And in your portlet.xml file, you have to go in and specify a special portlet preference validator. So right after my preference is set, and notice I did provide an initialization parameter for upper limit, a value of 10, and it's not read-only. I then go in and I also add in the preferences validator between the two portlet preferences tags there. And now this says, before you actually update a preference, go in and call the validate method of the number guesser validator. Um, and that's how you actually incorporate a validator. Um, I guess the other thing you might want to do, seeing that this is going to throw an exception, um, you might want to handle that in your code when you actually update your portlet preferences. And uh, so I guess I'm going to have to open up my number guesser portlet and just take a look at one of the places where I actually set the value for the preferences. So here I say, if somebody has actually gone in and into the edit mode and they've changed their upper limit, we get the new limit and then we set it in the port of preferences and we call store. And when we call store, that's when the validator is going to run. 
So what we probably want to do is we probably want to take the store method and surround it with try catch blocks. And in those try catch blocks, you notice that three try catch blocks, well, two try catch blocks come off. Um, those try catch blocks are the validator exception, which can be thrown when somebody tries to store. Also the I.O. exception. Uh, my bank always throws that. They tell me I owe them this and I owe them that as well. Um, I think actually there's also another one we might, might want to be aware of and that's the uh, read only exception. And I think I noted that um, in my little printout here. And of course if you try to update a portlet preference that is read only, well it will potentially throw a read-only exception. So that's actually another um, error message you might want to catch inside of your portlet. And unreachable block of code. Oh, who handles the read-only? So let me see. Try to do that. Let me put that up before the validator. There we go. Catch read only exception. And oh, jeez, it doesn't like that. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that whole if block and copy it in because as I'm recording this, I don't have time to go in and figure out what I'm doing wrong. So I'll save this. There. Yeah, looks like it's all good now. And so if the request comes in and uh, they try to set up or limit. Potentially, we can throw the validator exception, the read-only exception, and the I.O. exception as well. And those are three exceptions that you want to handle when you actually store values into the port of the preferences. The validator exception, of course, that's going to get triggered by this validate method here, which throws the validator exception, which we'll trigger whenever somebody puts in some information that doesn't pass the parse int method. Okay, well that shows you how to work with the portlet preferences object, how you create the class, how you configure it in the deployment descriptor, and also how you can catch the various exceptions that could be thrown when you actually try to store into your portlet preferences. Well, that's it for this tutorial. As I said, uh, please check out uh, my website, mcnz.com, scj.com, pulpjava.com, um, examscam.com, and please go in, uh, pick up a copy of my book, my Java certification guides, um, what is WebSphere, uh, if you've got a expense account, charge them to your boss, and uh, if you're at the website, uh, check out some of my sponsors, click on a Google ad or two, um, it does help support the cost of the site. Anyways, thank you very much, and happy portal!